This is crazy. First, I'll start with the old charcoal barbecue. This is a standard. It's just charcoal. And then I upgraded to this gas barbecue here. So it's propane gas. And then I got what's really needed for barbecue and smoking, a smoker. This is what we're gonna use. Barbecuing is just something you stumble upon and fall in love with, and you gotta just, it's all trial and error. You just keep on doing it. Uh, this smoker is about as close to barbecuing as I'm going to get really, but this isn't the famous North Carolina style. To do that, you really need to get out there and see these pits. We're currently here in Raleigh, North Carolina. We're about to go about an hour east of North Carolina to Aden. And once we're in Aden, we'll go to the Skylight Inn for our very first stop, and then we'll take this trail all the way across uh, North Carolina to Western North Carolina to, to we end up over here in the Appalachian Mountains for the barbecue boot camp. I got my bathing suit, my jammies, family fixture. Got my barbecue utensils. You never know if you might need these on the trip. I got my map. And I think that's everything. Wait, there's one more thing. You gotta have your moonshine. It's illegal here in the US, but it's the good stuff and it goes great with barbecue. We put barbecue up for sale in the mid-1800s here in this same community. The barbecue was a cheap way to feed a group of people, as well as communities had social gatherings made out of hog killing. They utilized everything out of that pig out of necessity, not because it was fun, but because they were poor. Pork traditionally has been king in North Carolina, as far as barbecue is concerned. We simply, this is all we've ever done. Uh, we've never added you know, turkey and some of the other things to the menu. It, they're very well when they're cooked right. Uh, we just never have, one, had to do it, so we've just stuck with what we've been good at. No gas, there's no thermometers, there's no thermostat to set and walk away from. It's hands on the entire time. You know, you can go to school to be a chef, and, which is a respectable trade. You know, I do. I know so little about food, it's unbelievable. But there's not a school you go to to learn how to cook good barbecue. It's something that you have to apprentice somebody. It's a craft. Pretty much what we have here is a shoulder, 
the skin. Just some good skin, some bad skin, I'll tell you what I'm talking about here. See the skin here is kind of like leather. Not, not a very good whole lot of crunch to it. We're looking for skin like you hear the pop. Actually I started, I was gonna be the, the pit man that James is. And uh, that's still a work in process, I guess. We're still waiting on that, but uh, I just have a knack for it, kind of like chopping. people from all over the world. So we had somebody here from Korea a couple weeks ago. So kind of a big deal coming here. This place is in the middle of nowhere. I guess that's where we gotta start to find good barbecue. I like that. They've only got two things on the menu and it's barbecue. You know that a place does barbecue right if they only serve barbecue. How Three are you four. doing? Doing good, let's say. Uh... Well, I want some barbecue. Um, you came to the right place, Captain. Oh, thank you. Uh, what do you think, a tray or a sandwich? What's the difference? Completely up to you. It comes small, medium, and large trays. Sandwich with without cold is pretty much the only option. Well, I guess I'm gonna have to do a small tray then. Water? <laughs> ain't no problem, man. Hey, maybe some mm. There's a crispy skins in there and a nice juicy uh, oh, fat from the skin. It's really good. It's a perfect amount of, uh, it's like not too greasy. Uh, they've really cooked it well. It's super tender, uh, moist, and delicious. It's part of the culture here, so um, that there's a trail doing that. That's great. I'm glad to hear that. I love my granddaddy. He came here. My daddy, he came here. And I'm going to keep coming here until I can't get up and go no more. <laughs> really cool to be sitting in here and part of this history. This is barbecue history for North Carolina. America is a young country. We don't have a lot of traditions, and it's important to you know, preserve the ones that we do hold. Smoking uh, barbecue is an art in itself. It really depends on uh, the, uh, the actual uh, barbecue pit master. Good morning, Imelda. Good morning, Juan. How are you? Morning, Pulled chicken special today? Yes, sir. Oh, that's, that's a lot of people's favorites. That's going to be good. I had a landscaping business, and one of my customers had a pig cooker in his shed. And he came home from work one afternoon, and I asked him what it was, because I had no idea. And after he saw how many questions I had for him, invited me the next weekend to come cook with him. But I got the barbecue bug that day. Good morning, Derek. Hey, Tommy, how's it going? How's it going today? It's going pretty good. How's your fire going? I got a good fire going, but we're running a little low on wood. Is that all you got? Yeah, that's all oh, I got for man. the rest of the day. I better get over to Kate's Hill. Yeah, we're going to need some more. I know. Some. Okay.
I think a lot of folks that are especially vacationing through the state of North Carolina are looking for restaurants that are on the North Carolina barbecue trail. Um, so yeah, it's, a, it's extremely important. Being a part of the barbecue, North Carolina barbecue trail is a goal of mine. It just, I can't believe we have to wait 15 years, but that means it's very special once you obtain that because that means that you did it right for that long period of time. You know, I can identify pretty much every tree by its leaves, but it's a lot different when you're looking at a pile. Um, trial and error. The first few weeks that I came back with wood to the restaurant, I was probably 20% wrong. <laughs> but the easiest way to teach people is to look for the oak grain. Everyone's seen oak furniture. They know what that grain looks like. And that's the easiest way to teach people. Look at this piece from five feet away. <clears throat> you can see the grain from a good distance away. You know that's an oak. Whereas a sweet gum, basically just has the plain, smooth, non-grainy wood. Hey Jason, hey. how's it going? Good, how's it going? Good. Boy, this pile is nice. I appreciate it, sir. I got your wood. Yeah, it's about time. <laughs> Super style. It's the same amount of bits, but just see the bits spread out more. All right, look at this. Das ist so ein Teil von den Kultur, diese, diese Barbecue Street oder äh, die verschiedenen Restaurants. Die haben alle ein, ein ganz anderes Gefühl, eine ganz andere Geschichte. Das ist so auch wie ein, sage ich mal, eine deutsche Fußballmannschaft. Ne? Also Bayern München gegen Schalke. Ne? Das ist Fußball ist Fußball, aber das ist total anders. Die kämpfen für den Mannschaft von Barbecue, kann ich sagen. Ne? He was nice enough to, to let me come and visit his restaurant multiple times. I think we went four or five times, and I took measurements of his pit, dimensions off the ground, great size, and get, he actually gave me some, some ideas on how to improve what he had had, and he said, uh, you know, you, you, you putting a restaurant in my parking lot wouldn't affect our business, and that's how popular and how great Lexington Barbecue is. <laughs> four large pits in these two kitchens right here. I can cook up to really about 4,000 pounds of barbecue a day if I need to. The best thing about my business, about how people compliment me and as far as being flattered, is they like to copy what I have. They like to mimic me. And I'll be glad to show anybody how I cook barbecue. I have people that call me once a month at least and want to copy what we do here. And that, I'm flattered by that. But I mean, it's, it's, like I say, it's still the true way to cook barbecue. That's the main thing. I mean, I appreciate it, and I appreciate the offer they gave me to be involved in it and all, but it's just not direct the path I want to take to promote my product. And I'm proud of what we've got, and I'm proud of the awards, but we don't show them or anything like that.
Uh, we probably hear about three or four times a week. Yep. It's word of mouth. People tell people. And that's the most efficient advertising one can get. Lexington barbecue to serve North Carolina. <laughs> yeah. One of the big reasons we started the blog was just to show everybody that this is really good barbecue that we have here in North Carolina and here's some of the best spots you may not see otherwise. You know, a lot of times we'll be driving by and see a place and it won't be time for a meal, but we'll stop anyway because you want to check out and see if they have some good barbecue. And take a look at this smokehouse. Oh wow, yeah. It's pretty awesome. I'm really glad we found this place that's so tucked away. Yeah, this was uh, out of the way, but it looks really Hi. cool. Hello. Hello. Hey, mind if we take a look inside? Come on in. Mind if I take a few pictures? Go right ahead. Yeah, yeah this is some crazy fish. I've never seen this before. No, it's totally different. Can you tilt that towards me? Mm. Huh. It's good. It's you can definitely taste the smoke and the fish from uh, smoking outside. So it's different, but it's uh, it's not bad. There are different styles throughout the U.S. It's just you'd expect, yeah. and uh, and everybody thinks theirs is the best. Where I'm from, up in Ohio. It clearly doesn't have the history of the tradition that it does here, and so, and there nor there are very many places to go and get it. You got to watch Sam uh, prep the whole hog and put it on the fire. It's gonna be pretty cool. Uh, but he's like super. He's got coleslaw, um, cornbread, and pork. That's all he has on his menu. So you keep it simple. Yeah, keep it simple. Stupid, right? Yeah. <laughs> Hey, nice seeing you. Well, Hog. I don't, yeah, I don't yeah. know if you want Give to do that. Give me some elbow. <laughs> hey, nice seeing you out here again. So this is the custom design rig? This is it, man. It's pretty nice. Uh, this is one of 11. Mm -hmm. Offer the exact same thing that we do yeah. in Aiden, North Carolina, anywhere I go. I'm going down to the church house. This seems like a lot of salt. But it's really not once it cooks down. You're talking about a hundred and sixty some pound animal. So it's a little different sprinkling salt on you. Hamburger steak or something. They were not intended to cook barbecue. want to go to any place uh, that has barbecue and whether they're newer or older traditional or non um, and judge it based on its taste so um, yeah that's kind of our goal is just to to show people other spots that may not be on the trails
Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. Well, as you can see, uh, President Obama stopped in a couple times for a visit. Um, he ordered uh, a full rack of ribs, split it between blueberry, chipotle, and brown sugar, sliced brisket, uh, collard greens, and corn pudding. It definitely uh, kicked it up a notch for us. Uh, we've been you know, pretty busy ever since. Um, right here we have uh, our um, jalapeno cheese grits, and it's uh, a little bit different take on um, a traditional southern side. We add uh, poblanos and jalapenos, and you can see here we have uh, the kit is already mixed up. I'll go ahead and add that to the mix. A lot of our barbecue restaurants, uh, vegetarians would probably be run out of town and shot. Uh, but we actually welcome them here at Twelve Bones. Um, we have quite a few sides on our uh, menu that are vegetarian friendly, and Nashville is a very vegetarian uh, friendly town, so we definitely try to accommodate to that. Yeah, so uh, we're doing our blueberry chipotle sauce, and uh, obviously it starts out with a huge batch of blueberries. We'll go ahead and dump those in. This is uh, chipotles in adobo. Around here, we're not afraid to experiment with honey. I'm gonna go ahead and add that. This is the traditional sauce. It uh, serves as the base for this sauce. Yeah, you know, tradition is great uh, in barbecue, but uh, it's 2014, and uh, you know we like uh, you know stuff like German precision, and we use smokers that you can set the time and the temperature, and uh, you basically can leave it, and it does its job, and we're not having to babysit it the whole time, so it's much easier this way, and uh, helps a lot with consistency. First things first, let's take a look at the smoker. All right, yeah. So it's like we're dealing with, uh, with gas. Yeah, most people never come back here and see the smoker, but we always want to know what we're dealing with. So we take a look, see what we have, and try to figure out what the heat source is. Is it electric? Is it gas? Is it wood-based? Here we have a gas smoker. It's pretty big to be able to handle quite a few ribs. Let's go inside and yeah. see how it tastes. All right, I'm excited. Let's do it. Oh, this is the Chipotle blueberry. Okay. It's got a good sweetness, good tenderness. You get a good bite out of it. It doesn't fall completely off the bone. Over the last couple of years, we really consider ourselves the barbecue pilgrims, just trying to check out every place we can get to, anywhere we get a chance to stop. I think our uh, friends and loved ones get a little annoyed with yeah. how much barbecue we eat, but yeah. it's something we just really love. Cross one more place off the list. Yeah, sure can. Lexington, growing up, um, it's by far our favorite. It's the best in the region. It's what we grew up on. We just love it a lot. So, anytime I think of like real barbecue, it's that place. In North Carolina, there's a saying you don't talk about religion, politics, or barbecue and it's an unending argument. You know in your heart that you were raised with one type of barbecue in North Carolina. 
Um, that is the one unequivocal barbecue. There's no other barbecue that'll ever satisfy the same way.